Now you have a lot of space up in the head. I got plenty of Fish space. Right, right? Let me just fucking go for that in a second. <laughs> Rip film, right? Rip film. Hey folks, how you doing? Captain Mark here, Kid Coach Chiefs Outdoors, and who are we with today? Captain Chris, keeping it, oh jeez. Keeping it in the <laughs> Rolling? Didn't you say rolling? Yeah. Oh, keep it rolling! Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a big one. Keep it rolling because I'm going to turn around, I'm going to release this fish, Andy, and I'm going to come right to you, all right? Mm -hmm. You're back, all right? That's not even a small fish. Well, that's not that bad. Yeah. All right, let's start this over again. We're going to release this cat. That was a, that was a double knuckleball Swiss, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mark, Kid Coach East Outdoors, thank you for joining us. This episode on the Hudson with Captain Chris from Keeping It Real Fishing. What's going on, ladies? <laughs> That's right, folks, up the Hudson without a paddle again, all right? Last year, you guys saw me and uh, Joey Tiles up there suspending worms in the water column and catching tons of striped bass. This year, I got a uh, call. Make it, it basically was an invite from Captain Chris from Keeping It Real Sport Fishing. That's sport fishing, which I screwed up in the beginning. So it's Keeping It Real Sport Fishing. Dot com, all right? And uh, Chris invited us up there, and we went and did some damage, right? Herring. Eels, worms, which is going to catch the most fish? Well, let's go see, all right? Let's start off with the worms. Got it. Fish on. Go oh, doubled up. Doubled oh. up. Look at this giant. That's a monster over here. Oh, triple up. Let's triple go. up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it. I got a triple. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Holy city. Big fish, little fish, one fish, two fish. We got Dr. Seuss to make the thing. Three fish, three fish, four. Five fish, six fish, six more. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on, hey. You know, that rod's gonna get hit right here as he's doing this one. There we go. Another fine fish. Let him go. <sighs> Oh, 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 oh. So work. basically what happened is something seems to be pulling on this thing. Oh, there Captain Chris going for the net. Oh, and another beastly fish. Huh? That's why you gotta wake up. Three o'clock in the morning. Come over and see Captain Chris over keeping it real. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Turn the corner of the mouth looks set, you gotta like that. Corner him out. There he is. How you doing? And that's the guy who found him right there. <laughs> nice fish. Chris. Dorsal's up. Torpedo. God. All right, the worm action's been hot and heavy, obviously. Right. Every time we drop a suspended uh, worm, we got fish on. A lot of these taps are very subtle, but a lot of these fish are committing to the worm. All right. But that's that fishing's been pretty hot and heavy. And speaking about heavy, all right, here's Andy right now. He's got a, an eel out there on the ready rig float all day, and he's been watching that eel get bit, all right? What happens? It gets bit. Andy's on. You on? Yep. I'll give it some drag and a hook set. Yeah, set that, uh, say hello to that thing. I did. Is Andy nervous? Chris? Andy's a little nervous, I think. That's my first fish of the We got a bite on the eel right now. What do you think about that? Okay, he was ugly, I, I, right? Yeah, he, need, he needs a couple. Uh... <laughs> you sir are an ignoramus. He's been waiting for the fish to be caught on that freaking eel. I know. This was a good eel. Got my ready rig going. What, are you nervous at all? Is there a nerves? He's been it's quiet be all day. Be a keeper. <laughs> no, it's probably too big for a keeper. <laughs> oh come on, we need some food. Put that on there. On these ones. Jeez, 
so we had a lot of line out. First fish on the new reel. Ew. That ready rig is working like a champ. It is. Oh, good That's fish. a good fish. Yeah. Hey, oh. Where do you want me to go, Andy? Um, Once you go, go yeah, you exactly. Go in the corner. Please. That's a good fish. Oh, That's boy. a good fish. No, no, no. This is going to be. You keep, you keep going. Yep. It's going to be a problem. Come on, buddy. Come back here. So here we go. That's a good question. Yep. Coming right at you. There we go. That's how you do it. That's a good fish, Jake. Sweet! Yeah. Good <laughs> fish, Andy. How you doing, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fat. She just let her. That is a fatty. We've got to go back and make yep. babies. Right. Let's get her back in as fast as we can. Get her back as fast as you can, Andy. Yep. Treat her like a lady. I wouldn't tell. Whoa, here we go. Thank you, Captain Chris. Yeah, man, nice job, nice work. Right, here she goes. Let's go, baby. Oh, she was good. She got my camera wet. Nice. Your eel might be good, too. Nice oh, fish. yeah, he's going. <laughs> nice Eel's fish. Good. Eel's good. All right, so there you go. You saw your own eyes, Andy. Call the freaking strap in. <laughs> That's all right. That in itself might be a miracle on Christmas. All right, Captain Chris, talk to us a little bit how you had that set up right there. What exactly so was right, that right? right there? We're using a, uh, a live eel suspended on a ready rig float. It's the only way to do it here on the Hudson River. It's one of the best products out there for running suspended baits for striped bass. Steve Dressing, ready rig floats. Captain Chris, keeping the real fishing. All right. There he goes again, trying to get free floats for Chris. <laughs> All right, plays and play haters. Now I have my preferred bait out there. Suspended again on the ready rig float. I want to be it's in 22 feet of water. Okay, pass off! <laughs> 20, what you say? 22 feet. I want to be in 22 feet of water. Get over here. Get some. I want to be in 22 feet of water. He's got me in 30 something feet of water. I can't catch a fish. All right, out we're in 30 feet. We're a little deep right now, all right? As far as I'm concerned. You distracted me. Oh my goodness, she's so abusive. And what kind of accent is that? Staten Island meets Long Island? We're gonna go to me right now. I am now watching this herring on, this, uh, on the ready rig float. I'm looking for a bigger fish myself. Andy with that eel's got the biggest fish so far. All right, so write that down in your notes. Worms, big fish, eel so far. I have a herring out there. Let's listen to right now the herring get picked up by a bass and she just starts to swim away with it, all right? We got two ready rig floats out there. Reason being, because we didn't have any more. We only had uh, two ready rig floats and uh, we had a balloon out there. So what was happening, that fish was going near a balloon. Let's take a peek what happens. I don't think it All right, folks, what happens here is the fish picks it up and starts to walk away with it. Fish don't walk. All right, I get that, all right? It starts to take off a little bit with it, and it's heading towards the balloon, which I don't want to happen, so I'm trying to control that bait. I'm thumbing it. I have the bail open, of course, if that fish takes off, but I'm trying to now reel that fish in a little bit so it gets away from that uh, balloon and doesn't foul up. Obviously, the fish has other things on its mind. So here I am. I'm just picking up a little slack and bringing that uh, red rig a little closer to myself. And I think that triggers this fish to say hello to it and really take off with it, right? So that's what happens. Key gets into his ninja stance right now. And uh, I'm going to get ready for the hook set. I know he's running north. Bail's open. And then I'm going to say hello. Get him now. Get him now. Yeah, buddy. Oh, hell yeah. Real new rock. Uh, I am totally scared of Booker and Andy on this nice set of It's okay, here. Get that one in. Good 
you're on this guy. Now, of course, that bass brings that red rig right into the balloon line, and uh, we have to deal with that. You're liking that, aren't you? Now, this is one of the reasons that ready rigs are so useful out here is you could just deploy the ready rig free it and it'll go right down to the barrel balloons you can't do that because they're tied onto the line itself and it just makes things more difficult Chris has done that once before in his life? Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, Captain! That was well done right there, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so I got this cruise out. Good fish. Nice fish. Take a big at him. You got that on? No, we're good. Look at that. That is awesome. That is awesome. Let's go ahead and hinge it out if you don't mind. That looks quite thin off. You just lay that ready rig in the front, too. That's how it works out right there. The fatty, we're gonna send home to go have some love. On the ready rig float, and a big shed. Herring. Herring. Herring, I keep saying shed. I don't know why I keep saying shed. Because you're clueless. All right, people, it is cold as a stepmother's kiss out here right now. <gasps> Captain Chris is readjusting us right now. The river, right here, let's take a peek at it right now. The river flows, all right? She flows all over the place. So uh, there's different currents, different depths, and fish seem to move down different channels in the river itself. So that's what we're doing. We're readjusting. All these rods are gonna be readjusted. Getting some love on the uh, on the shad, but they're just not committing. I'm not sure if there's smaller fish attacking it, but uh, Captain Chris got a nice striped bass. As a matter of fact, let's take a peek at her again. Got another fish on, Captain Chris. <laughs> oh, baby. There you go, there's another one there. Oh, that's a better fish. There you go, you can just grab that net. Here's the net, Andy. Got it. That's a good fish right there. That's a good fish right there. That's why you drive up with the river. That's a legit net right there too. It is a legit net. Okay. Good fish. There you go. That's a little better, right? Yep. Oh shit. That's a good thing. Oh, shit. That guy's gone. It's always good to see these fish are really healthy up here. They are just pre-spawn again. It's cold. Water temperatures, Chris says, says has to be around 59 to 60 degrees for them to start getting really romantic and start uh, breeding those females, all right? all right? Yeah, these are some pre-spawn Hudson River striped bass. They're coming up the river looking for that optimal spawning temperature, 59, 62 right. degrees. Right now, they're a little lethargic, cold water, right around 50 degrees. And they got they got on the mind. Not not so much eating, but they're, they're hungry today. We're getting a few of them. We're getting them. We are definitely getting them. All right, this is the whole circle of trust between the rarity fish come up here, they have the hokey pokey, and then they go back down, right? Oh yeah, that's what they do. It's they the hokey pokey. end up out east, Montauk, Block Island, up in the Cape, once they leave here, that's where they go. But what's really crazy is they come all the way up there, and that's where they spawn, all right? And explain if you can, Captain Chris, what exactly does the spawning process look like? So when that water temperature rises up, those fish, the big females will roll right on the top of the uh, surface of the water. And the males will come up, hit their bellies, release the eggs, roll in the sperm, and you'll see massive splashes all over the surface of the water in a couple of weeks. I mean, it's kind of like Andy, right? It's same it's same technique like Andy, Andy uses yeah. right there, right? That's eating more donuts. Like eating donuts, rolling in <laughs> sperm. But that's all the circle of trust with Andy, all right? He's bordering on inappropriate. We're going to a con shot at it, right? Let's get back to the office. Hi, first con man right there, Tracy Sawyer. All right, why'd you get the con shot Because she's wearing a con hat. Damn, that con hat looks like it's in 1992, all right? Things trade vanilla condition right there, all right? Tracy Sawyer's taking this con hat seriously. That's why he's in this week's episode. All right, next, who do we have? We have Wade Rimkunas from across the pond, all right? From Connecticut. He's out there, spring, 
blackfish fishing, all right? Just so it's not a fallacy that it's fake. There he is. He's got a couple of blackfish. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know if he limited it out, but he did well on the blackfish in Connecticut. He went out the last day of blackfish early spring season, and he nailed them, all right? Congratulations to my man Wade over in Connecticut for being this week's kind of shout out of, of the, the week. week. Jerry, what, what just happened? Caught the biggest fish ever that I've <laughs> ever caught. And how, how'd you do that? Right here. Oh yeah, what, what are you doing? You you rubbing that thing? Rub the con sticker. Rub the con. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is Jerry. It's a client of KeepingRealSportFishing.com and he caught the biggest fish of his life right there. How'd he do it? Seriously? No BS. There's not many of these left. I don't even know if I have any more. I do have a few. Alright? Con hats coming out. I'll probably get these and mail these out to con hats. But, good luck. Fishing superstitious, alright? Boom. Rub the con sticker on the boat. Fish will come. It's that simple, alright? Alright. I just want to touch base real quick about, you know, spot burn and stuff like that. You see uh, back in the background here, you see these big ass buildings right now. And you say, hey, that guy's burning that spot. Clearly, I would have covered that if Captain Chris said it was something to worry about, all right? In that back building, the IBEW crew right there reaching out to the kid, all right? Shout out to the IBEW people working on that building right there. I did an Instagram shot and the IBEW guys were, and girls, I don't know if there's girls and guys in the IBEW. I don't know what IBEW is, but I don't know what I know it's some type of union. I know they built America. God bless them for that. All right, without them, what do we live in? Huts, come on, all right? So, shout out to the IBEW. And the reason that there's no spot burning on the river is because those fish could be there and in two hours, they're working the currents. They shift with the currents. They don't associate themselves with structure Really, they those school fish are running up and down as currents move in the ebb and flow, right? So that's where they were at that particular time. You go there tomorrow, you ain't gonna find them there. They're gonna be down the river, they're gonna be in some type of other tidal flow, and that's why you really don't spot burn the river, okay? So take it easy. Those are your kind of shout outs of the week. I hope you guys like that, all right? Jerry, Tracy, Wade, come on now. Three kind of shout outs, I'm catching up, all right? These are our baits right about here. Right, the cog line, which is close over ground. It's not a cog line, I'm making that up. It's 20 feet. These guys are coming up and saying, hey, how you doing over here? What do you guys have to offer for chow? And we'll look what we have to offer. Freaking 15 rods. Oh, we just getting bit too. What the hell was that? That's that freaking eel again. Yeah. Coming up and checking it out. Look at that fish right in the baits. So those are our baits right here. This is... The Loch Ness Monster that just came up. <laughs> when was the last time you guys saw the Loch Ness over here? I gotta say, it was probably back 2011. Came out here. It was green and wild. Oh, great. He's got Captain Chris lying now, too. You feel that, Ron? We brought all our fun stuff. We just didn't bring the uh, terminal tackle. Whose rods are these? Crafty One Customs out of yeah. Rhode Island. Very nice. Rhode Island, huh? Yeah. It's a rubbery grip. Hey folks, Captain Chris's gear today was from Crafty One Customs in Rhode Island. That is a veteran-owned company. I hope you guys support that because you know the kid loves the veterans, all right? So take a peek at it. This is the link, Crafty One Customs, for some high-end custom rods and other stuff. He's back again. Here he goes. He just took it away. Oh, this one's a big one. This is the old four pound. That's the giant. There she is. Go ahead, look at him in action in all his greatness. Wow. That guy's basically up here. He's basically up here on spring break and he's looking for something to happen. Well, here are your stats, cats. You got worms, most fish by far. Eels, biggest fish by Andy. And herring, a fish. Ah! <laughs> he's got the last left on him right there. If you guys and girls ever have the chance to get up the Hudson River, look up Captain Chris, keep it real, sportfishing.com. He will put you on these monsters, all right? Fishing's been cool up there. It's one of my favorite places to fish. The scenery's beautiful. Fishery, are very, when you hook up a fish, those fish are froggy, man. They're, for some reason, they have so much oxygen. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's that fresh water. Makes them fight a little more. 
but in my experience, those fish really fight. And now we're gonna run it over to Captain Chris and he's gonna tell you how to get in touch with him, all right? Go online, it's at www.keepingitrealsportfishing.com or you give me a call, 845-416-8679. Keeping it real, sport fishing. I'll even let you come. Rub the con sticker. Ah. <laughs> Hey folks, thanks for watching Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. Consider subscribing below and please hit the like button. Also, make a comment, go to the bad, hopefully good, and uh, take a peek at Crafty One Custom Rods, veteran-owned company there. Support the veterans, of course. And until next time, we'll see you on the water. You, sir, are an ignoramus. <laughs>